Assalamu alaikum everyone. We are back with the second session of the day. Our, our guest speaker for the day is Ms. Sadaf Saad. She is CIO at Pepsi and uh, the topic of the day is business process automation. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much. I'm going to mute because I'm getting a lot of people. So, uh, Bismillah Rahman Rahim, as to meet everyone. First of all, I take this opportunity to thank Imran and Jenny Ubay for giving me the to talk to the I know this is a very, very difficult issue to the summary school for but there has not been anything like this with so essentially uh, you know this is one of a kind and uh, I feel very honored to be part of this platform and this forum. The topic that I need to communicate about Sadia, uh, sorry for interruption. Sadia, your voice is very much cut. It's not very audible. If you want to guide them, if you want to use two screens. Yes, yes. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Yes, sir. 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 अगर दो यूज़ करें हैं महल में एक माइक ऑफ करना पड़ेगा आपस में फीडबैक इनके अपने ऑफिस से नहीं मैं एक सर एक माइक ऑफ कीजिएगा ना जो जिसमें आप बात करेंगे वो ठीक है दूसरे वाले को ऑफ कर दें ये फीडबैक ख़त्म हो जाएगी अहमद ये टेक्निकल प्रॉब्लम है इसको जरा रिजॉल्व कराइए बिकॉज़ उनकी आवाज नहीं आ रही है जी सर आई एम लुकिंग इनटू इट ओके अच्छा आई थॉट मेरे सिस्टम के साथ प्रॉब्लम है मैं इसलिए साइन आउट किया था मिस सदफ आप या 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 उनका इंटरनेट इशू भी है इंटरनेट कनेक्शन इशू भी लग रहा है और उनके माइक दो दफा आवाज आ रहा है मींस उनके यहां दो स्क्रीनस यूज हो रही है ओह यस अच्छा आई थॉट कि इशू हमारे इंटरनेट के साथ है तो मैं तो इसलिए साइन आउट करके अपना इंटरनेट चेक कर रहा था जी जी आपका आवाज आ रही है जी आप क्लियर हैं जी मैंने अपना कनेक्शन चेंज करके देखा है अच्छा जी जी अब मिस तो क्लियर आ रही है आपकी आवाज ठीक है तो मिस मिला मैं मानिए रहीम थैंक यू वेरी मच फॉर गिविंग दिस ऑपरेशन I'm glad that somebody thought about it and they are actually doing something. Uh, we need in Pakistan a lot of startups and definitely we need to start thrive and succeed, not just um, have startups popping up every year, but also making sure that they are able to get they can from uh, and industry experts who can guide them, facilitate them, and make sure that they become the future leader in whatever industry or vertical that they are planning to sell. Having said that, um, I'm really glad that Nath chose the topic of business process automation and how it relates to the startup ecosystem. Uh, business process automation, I'm sure everybody is aware of that when you start a business, you need to um, some clarity on product or services that you will be offering. And once you do that, then the actual challenges start. So you get a really nice pitch deck, you get funding, you set up a company, uh, be it a one man show or maybe a company of four or five people, doesn't matter. Regardless of line of business you've chosen or what product you've chosen to launch, at the end of the day, Every business needs some level of processes to help structure the work that is going to happen. They also need is to help guide um, and to put the business stays on track when it's on. So launching a startup is easy. Sustaining it is long term is the hard. Part. That is one reason globally saying the statistics 
are not very promising. A lot of companies start up, they can do very well, brilliant product ideas. One or two years down the line, they realize that essentially they did not think it through. So uh, when we say that they did not think it through, this because they don't think about how an actual business operates. So a business process framework allows you to structure your business in such a way that it becomes in the and not just in the short term. So having a business idea is step one, but what is beyond that? So once you've identified the product, identified your needs, you've identified the market, market research, you identify who your potential customers are, and you go with a big bang, you get marketing and launch with great marketing, great product, great everything. One year down the line, you forget to just put up that thing. Does that sound familiar? I mean, it is just me. So, what is that people think they are subject matter experts? Mr. Bhakti, your voice is clear. There is. I think, Aga, if you can mute it, because I think either you or Emma, there is some noise coming in from the door. जी वो सर इमरान की आवाज मेरे ख्याल से दो दफा आ रही थी क्योंकि अहमद उनके सामने बैठे हैं आपकी आवाज एक्चुअली मुसदफ एक तो आप आपको आ रही आवाज जी अब क्लियर आ रही है इसकी वजह मैं आपको बता रही हूं ना कि देयर इज समबडी ऑन दिस कॉल इज नॉट एंड आई थिंक दैट सब ने किया बाय म्यूट सो इदर यू और अहमद सो इफ यू गाइस कैन प्लीज कीप इट म्यूटेड या थैंक यू सो मच जी थैंक यू नाउ नाउ आई कैन एक्चुअली हियर माय सेल्फ क्लियरली सो आई एम श्योर यू कैन हियर मी टू सो एनीवेज कमिंग ओवर टू बिजनेस ऑटोमेशन इन द स्टार्टअप फ्रेमवर्क सो आई व्हाट आई फील इज दैट देयर आर सर्टेन प्रोसेसेस व्हिच आर क्रिटिकल टू एनी बिजनेस इन ऑर्डर फॉर द बिजनेस टू डू वेल वेदर इट्स अ वन मैन कंपनी अ टू मैन कंपनी और समथिंग दैट स्टार्टेड विद 100 पीपल a startup needs a few critical business processes and those need to be automated why automation simply because um a company like pepsico maybe can afford to hire 50 people in the accounts payable department to manage their billing and revenue collection however a startup is never human resource intensive so there will always be far fewer people and a lot of work that needs to be done so automation is where the efficiencies come in if you automate the repeatable and mundane tasks if you automate the tasks which can be easily handled by let's say a robotic process automation bot uh, you don't need to hire four people to take care of that job similarly recruitment and hr onboarding um, if you're a company if you're an organization you will be hiring people a lot of those tasks are very repeatable they're very standard they're very streamlined you can easily automate them you don't need to hire a huge hr department just to facilitate uh, the onboarding process or the recruitment process it can easily be handled through automation again uh, the, the you know when we come to the product development part i know a lot of companies i've been a part of a couple of startups in the early stages of my career including what is now um, 2 billion dollar company called affinity so when i joined affinity um it was a startup it had just started about a year um ago at that time this is early 2009 so the company had been in operation for less than a year and what biggest challenge that we found was in two areas one was product development so everybody considered themselves an expert on product everybody wanted to uh, you know implement their own methodology their own framework everybody thought that my way is the best way there was no standardization so some of the teams were following agile some of the teams were following waterfall some were following a hybrid and it was a complete mess so this is generally a challenge that happens in pretty much all startups you know uh, too many uh, people doing too many things no standardization this is again an area where companies especially startups can really benefit from process automation standardize and streamline your product evaluation and development part standardize your upgradation and enhancement part 
the second biggest challenge that i for my experience having worked for a startup um, is customer service and support so fine you have a great product you figured out your product development part you've onboarded and hired excellent amazing resources who are doing a brilliant job creating that product but once you deploy that solution once you have launched that uh, service customer support and service is a very very critical component of creating you know the right value for the customer and also the right value for business in terms of monetization so imagine ordering something from a service you did not get your service or your product on time and you don't know how to reach the customer support or maybe you do reach the customer support but they somehow mishandle your query or your complaint i can bet that you will never use that service or product again simply because the product may have been good or bad but the customer service really ticked you off it really put you off and you are a lost cause so that's how you lose customers so you know um, hr processes your billing and revenue collection because you know we may as a big entity afford to delay payments by 30 to 60 days but imagine a startup not getting paid for their services for the next 60 days you just don't have the kind of cash flows uh, to be able to sustain that so essentially it is not an overhead i've heard a lot of ceos i've heard a lot of uh, you know cfos of startups say that oh yeah you know we'll go for automation once we are bigger let's make some money first and then we'll invest in automation my take on this is completely disruptive my point is you don't identify your process framework you don't identify your critical business processes and you don't target their automation asap you basically done in today's world without automation no company can operate simply you know it's as simple as that and covid has been a perfect example so everybody who had a five year plan they are accelerating their five year plan for digital transformation and automation what was supposed to happen 3 years down the line is going to happen 3 months down the line simply because every organization big or small has found themselves on the threshold of you know major disruption uh companies that were thriving um like airbnb for example or kareem and uber they were thriving before corona and covid happened you know they found themselves without customers so if you don't if you have a service and you don't have customers what do you do you have to be very agile and your processes have to be very agile and the only way for you to be able to pivot and change your entire product offering and your product line and be still relevant in modern world because things change so quickly is if you have automation and if you have people who are comfortable with delegating the non value added task to bots and to you know uh, technology whereas they focus on actually thinking about how to make their products and services great how to capitalize on the consumer journey and the consumer experience so essentially these are some examples of why you know um, companies which started off as startups have done so well another factor becomes that when you automate your core business processes and critical business processes that allows you more time to innovate uh, be it through design thinking be it through design sprints be it through you know any kind of innovative breakthroughs you need your people focusing on what can get you to the next level what can bring about disruption in your industry so digital transformation is not for digital companies or companies who have a lot of uh, technology infrastructure at the back end it is for everyone business process automation is for every every uh, organization that hopes to survive and thrive in the new normal because whether we like it or not uh, we have found ourselves in the new normal whereby um, retailers are forced to rethink how they go to the market and reach to the customers e-commerce which was considered a very premium thing a luxury um, item a good to have is now a must have companies uh, who have really come out on top like amazon for example 
are the ones who were a agile who invested heavily in process automation and digital transformation over the years and b who were very very non human centric so they're process centric not to say that by doing process automation you take away the value of having a great team of resources on board those resources will be needed for analytics those will be needed for tasks which require human intelligence that no artificial intelligence platform can ever replace however there are a lot of things like entering invoices in a system um you know entering uh, sales data that is generated at the end of the day into a system these tasks don't require a lot of human intelligence they don't require uh, analytical thinking they don't require a lot of um uh, you know human bandwidth in terms of intelligence or in terms of capacity or capability so anything or any process which you feel does not really utilize your at the best best to uh, essentially consider it a candidate for and the sooner the better um in terms of pakistani startup ecosystem um i've been very fortunate um i work with um uh, and uh, some sessions i've interacted with a lot of startups nest to nest io uh to some other platforms and we have a lot of talent i feel that pakistanis are really creative and innovative the one area in which we lack is our discipline towards processes a discipline towards the creation of processes towards uh, the implementation of processes so we are weak in that area the first step towards improvement starts when we understand what are our areas of opportunity and development so if we consider process framework creation and process identification as a weak area process implementation as a weak area um you know maybe general saab would not agree with me because uh, you know he comes from a different background but when you talk about the civilian population you tell them the process or the sop is to do a and then b and then c there will be 100 people who will come in and start doing a c b and then d so they'll just think that you know they know it best and they can just bypass the process and create their own uh, standard operating procedure because they feel that that's going to work better so that is an area of development definitely uh, for pakistanis as a nation as a whole i feel we are not very disciplined we are not very process oriented we are very human centric and human oriented the pros and cons of that obviously are there um it's great for creativity but it's definitely not uh, great for sustaining a business especially a startup so no organization uh, which hopes to become big in future you know even companies which started from a person's garage like the microsoft is a huge example of that they started from somebody's garage google is another example of that amazon they started from nothing they started from scratch and look at where they are now people emulate them people quote them as examples uh, people do uh, you know go through their uh, success as a case study how did they get there they got there not by bypassing processes not by focusing on automation not by being digitally savvy or open to technology disruptions they got there by being very agile and nimble in terms of adoption and hearty adoption of technology they got there by staying ahead of the curve investing in cutting edge technology um, and definitely by uh, creating processes that were so streamlined that things were just happening on autopilot as they say people should not have to worry about okay what's the process if somebody joins my organization what is the onboarding process like uh if somebody is going to a performance appraisal what is it like if somebody orders a, a product from my website what is the order to cash cycle going to be like so all of these things the more seamless and the more perfect uh the execution and the implementation through automation and technology the better the overall customer experience and that is essentially in today's time and age people don't have time uh, to waste 
so you lose customers when you give them a bad uh, experience um, you know for, with your product or your service similarly if your customer support and service is amazing and that process is so streamlined that people feel that somebody is out there who will hear them who will listen to their uh, complaint who will listen to the problem and they will be holding their hand and walking them to to a solution that's the company that everybody is going to gravitate towards so these are some of the things i feel that uh, you know um, as a starter or as in organization for that matter people should come at the forefront of that your customer should be or your consumer should be the prime focus around which all your processes should be developed and designed uh, you may not like it but at the end of the day consumer is king so i mean i know it is very overwhelming and it is unexpected because a lot of the businesses they are running still um, with a mindset that may have worked 30 years ago but in the last 2 to 3 decades technology has really in the last 2 decades especially 20 years ago there was hardly any body with an proper internet connection in pakistan and look at where we are now so in this day and age every business i feel is a technology business is it at least a technology driven business a, be it a university be it a school be it a college you find that uh you know even schools and you know uh, universities and colleges globally they're moving towards hybrid approach to online and offline learning so definitely that required them to relook and reconsider how they were operating before relook at their processes bring about technology and innovation in terms of how they deliver their services to their end consumers when you talk about retail um and when you talk about uh, businesses that provide a product or service this becomes even more critical because then there is the concern about sourcing your contract management comes into play your procurement comes into play automating that really makes your life so much easier you will never again miss a time a timeline on a contract you will never again miss a timeline or a key deliverable against a procurement request or an rfp that is there because humans no matter how analytical are prone to making mistakes once you automate these standard processes you take away the element of surprise you take away the element of human error it's for human error definitely for the reason so the the core processes when you take away the element of human error it just makes things so much easier for you to handle and you can focus really focus your energy on designing and creating products and services that will delight your customers that will make them uh, you know so happy with you as an entity that they will keep coming back for more uh, you know word of mouth to recommendations to others and then obviously um, uh, what i feel is that this also frees up business energy to create synergies with other companies which are offering similar products and services in the that space for example uh, let's say pepsi co operates in food and beverages so there are other companies out there who are in food and beverages who are maybe non competing so maybe they have different categories of products so if we waste all our time thinking about uh, the basic stuff that doesn't leave us any time to think about how we can synergize and take our business to the next level how uh, can we uh, tap and target markets like rural where we don't have that much coverage yet we want to reach out to maximum number of people and maybe that will only happen once we can innovate and once we can actually create the kind of chemistry and synergy that will allow us and even if that requires us to partner with a startup we would be more than happy to do that because you know um, every uh, start you know every major corporation was at one time a startup and they continuously and repeatedly started doing some things well and really well and they got noticed when they got noticed they either uh, you know merged with a bigger entity or they partnered with a bigger entity and it was a win win situation for them so really to bring about excellence in service and delivery i think um bringing about excellence in, in terms of your process framework development and process automation is extremely crucial uh, to the success 
of um, any organization. Um, in terms of uh, the ecosystem of startups in Pakistan, I, what I feel is that as a whole, um, people who are bold enough to take a risk and start up their own company, hats off to them, but they really need to rethink uh, the role of advanced technologies and how it can play a critical role in the future of their business. Investing in tech at the right time, at the start of the business, can be the game changer that can take them from zero to 60 in the shortest possible time. Because once things get settled in um, and people get used to uh, the things working in a certain way, bringing about change and change management is another big piece of resistance. So you do not want to start off with a bad process and say, OK, you know what, let's just get it started. Let's just get the ball rolling. We'll think about how to fix this process one year down the line. One year down the line might be too late for you. So essentially, you know, that is a change in your paradigm, a change in mindset that is needed. And um, obviously, uh, what I feel is that we need to invest. Um, on the other hand, we need to invest not just in technology, but in also in people capability development. Now, it might seem like a very contradictory thing that I'm saying actually think about it it's not so you want to train people not to enter sales orders and invoices in your system a robotic process automation chatbot or a bot can do that you want to train people to be data scientists you want to train people to be data analytics experts you want to train people to have machine learning um, scripting capabilities you want your people to be design thinking and innovation enablers. So those are the capabilities that are the capabilities of the future. When you take away the mundane tasks from your team of brilliant people, you allow them time to self-develop and you can also focus on their development and empower and enrich them with the right tools and um, the right knowledge that will help them to power your business to success. So, um, you know, that's um, basically you know, a little bit on what I think about this space. I, I guess if anybody has any questions, I could take that. Uh, Ms. Sadaf, uh, in process automation, you discussed uh, waterfall model and agile model. Being a software engineer, we have that models are But I don't think so that her business graduate or because our incubators are all the departments. They even here intermediate even BCom. So can you please uh, describe uh, so, both these models for them? Question, so thank you for asking that. Um, and thank you for highlighting that because you have uh, it's uh, computer science or yeah, engineering background. Se hai, it's, uh, it's very common knowledge. But business schools may be agile for project management. So it's um, item considered. Kiya jata hai. Oh, this is about technology, about uh, you know, uh, computers, this is about software, this is about something else. Project management or project management project management framework is in the UK. So, after project, you have a technology project, so you have project management expertise. If you have a building construction, so that is a specific project. और या अगर आप एक अपने यू नो थीसिस की तैयारी कर रहे हैं या आप कुछ प्रेजेंटेशन बना रहे हैं या आप कोई केस स्टडी डेवलप कर रहे हैं दैट इन इटसेल्फ इज अ प्रोजेक्ट तो अगर आप प्रोजेक्ट पे काम कर रहे हैं कि डेफिनेशन भी बहुत सिंपल है इट्स अ यू नो इट्स अ यू नो यू हैव अ डेलिवरेबल एंड ऑब्जेक्ट एंड सम डेलिवरेबल्स दैट आर एसोसिएटेड विद दोस ऑब्जेक्ट इट हैज अ फाइनाइट स्टार्ट एंड एंड टाइम समथिंग व्हिच इज नॉन कंटिन्यूअस so if I'm giving operational support, then it's not a project. Anything which starts and ends, and it's finite objectives, and it's finite deliverables, and it's in time period, 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 and it's in 
होता है अगर I believe uh, Sadaf, Sadaf has a Wi-Fi connection issue. Yeah. Uh, I think that that's the issue. Because even with her uh, video off, we can't. Uh, it was such a wonderful uh, lecture or a speech. But I think just because of this uh, hitch uh, or glitch, you can call it, um, we are not hearing her properly. Uh, Sadaf, can you please try again yeah, uh, without your you. video? But I'm, I'm getting, uh, I'm getting yeah, uh, voice okay. noise from somewhere um, on the call. Yeah, Ahmed, you can mic off. I'm going to off your mic. Yes, now you can hear me better. Yes, it's better. Yes, it's better. Yes, because some, somebody or the other is continuously unmuting, so there is a backlash voice ka aada hota hai. So I think that's mixing up the voices a bit. Uh, so anyways, um, what I was saying was that if you have four deliverables, you have to complete four months. The way it works in waterfall is that you will spend uh, one month doing your analysis, two months doing your development, 15 days doing your testing, and then maybe a week uh, doing your launch. In Agile, you will divide uh, your project into four strings or four time boxes. One uh, deliverable will be completely analyzed, developed, tested, and released at the end of the first sprint or time box. At the end of one month, you will have a working product available with some features. Second sprint, may apne kuch all apne features liye, uh, all apne apne deliverable ke items liye, or usko completely analyze, develop. Test and launch here. So, 
you don't have to wait till the end of the project to see what will be delivered to the client or the customer or the consumer you are continuously in an iteration mode and with every iteration you get a working prototype or a working model of what the final product is going to look like in today's day and age where people generally don't want to risk spending 4 to 6 months on a product and find out ki ji i wanted a honda civic and i ended up getting um a suzuki mehran i mean the basic requirements are the same it's a car it has four wheels it has four doors but that's not what i wanted so imagine if they were following an agile uh, sprint based or iteration based approach unhe pehle mahine mein hi pata chal jata ke bhai this design is not that of a honda civic this is not exactly what i wanted and they could do a quick course correction rather than wait for four months and then just uh, waste everybody's time in the process so that's the primary difference between agile and waterfall so what agile does is it takes the waterfall approach and it encapsulates it into smaller chunks of time the goal being that within every chunk of time certain key deliverables or features of the product will be available to the end users agar aap ne software ki terminology mein baat kare to aapko um rtm version beta version ya aapne access suna hoga it's a work in progress so every time they release a service pack every time they release a patch they are upgrading the features and they're uh, troubleshooting some of the problems providing you with a solve for that so this is called continuous development and testing ye har product ke liye apply kar sakta hai bahut aasani se agile ke upar companies move kar rahi hain even at pepsico we are now stringently moving towards scaled agile it's called safe so scaled agile framework safe is something which is what six sigma used to be for production and manufacturing at one point in time so this is another thing that uh, a lot of organizations are investing on and to agar's point it is equally important for the business stakeholders to understand these terminologies and understand the tools that support these terminologies similarly it is equally important for business stakeholders to provide their financial and conceptual buy in for technology adoption when it comes to automation main hamesha ye kehti hu aur believe karti hu ki business process automation ek business project hota hai ye kabhi bhi it ka project nahi hota so if it is driving it there is definitely something wrong and need to go back to the drawing table uh, do the blueprint again get the business on board get them to drive the digital transformation because every digital transformation is actually a business transformation and business alone cannot drive it without it but it alone definitely cannot drive it if they don't have business on board so that's basically it from uh, my end um nan and janal sahab uh, if anybody else has any questions or uh, if not it was a pleasure being given this opportunity thank you so much um so that since you are the cio at pepsi being cio of pepsi go would you like to comment on the state of entrepreneurship ecosystem and innovation ecosystem of pakistan and if you may have any suggestions for the uh, key players of the ecosystem uh, uh again an excellent question ms um okay so this is my opinion uh, personally um and this is not my opinion as a uh, cio of pepsi go it is uh, primarily my opinion as an individual who has spent 20 years in technology mera khayal hai ki ji entrepreneurship landscape um, is booming but there is definitely a lack of maturity and a lack of focused and dedicated seriousness towards developing startups that produce products and services which can scale uh, we are very quick to launch a company but we have not thought it through i have experienced uh, you know a lot of service providers especially for technology products uh, the idea and concept was great the execution was not great so at the end of the day people say ke uh, you know pakistani company ko aap chance dein why don't we use pakistani products 
um i am very patriotic um i come from a family where you know love for country comes first before anything but at the end of the day we are running a business right so a business will see which product and which company and which partner is going to give them the maximum benefit that benefit can only come if you are partnering with somebody who has the product maturity the implementation uh, skill set as well as the right kind of processes and support available to help you partner and take it through till the end matlab aapko finish line tak ko lekar jaye ye cheez currently many jo startups ke sath mera interaction hua hai as cio um in different organizations many ye cheez lacking dekhi hai uh, there is a definite dearth of professionalism as well and that is very unfortunate because if we are to compete with the wipros and the tatas and the infotechs of this world um in pakistan even in the technology front i think we need to really gear up in terms of professionalism in terms of automation in terms of being very structured very disciplined focusing on the consumer focusing on customer service and support because aapne har ek se suna hoga that pakistan mein to customer service ka concept hi nahi hai yahan to bas cheez bechte hain aur nikal jate hain they don't care what the customer is thinking after that ki har bande ne ye baat ki apne drawing room mein baith ke and why is that essentially it is because consumer is not at the the heart and soul of that organization so my advice is that be more consumer centric or uh, be more focused on processes that help you become more consumer centric invest in the right technology and the right uh, resources at the right time and always design your product and services with the end goal in mind that you want to be you know think big you want to be the next amazon you want to be the next alibaba you want to be the next uber uh, or airbnb of pakistan so with that kind of a mindset it's not you're not uh, into a startup or innovation or you're not starting your own business because you just wanted to pay check agar aapko sirf pay check hi chahiye hota to aap bhi कोई कंपनी ज्वाइन कर लेते मेरी तरह आपको पेचेक मिल जाता महीने के सो आई थिंक फॉर फॉर स्टार्टअप स्कूल इट इज इम्पॉर्टेंट फॉर ऑल द पार्टिसिपेंट्स टू थिंक अबाउट दीज थिंग्स एंड आई एम श्योर दैट इंशाल्लाह दे विल डू वेरी वेल थैंक यू सदफ वेरी वेल आंसर्ड विद दिस विल मूव टुवर्ड्स द कंक्लूडिंग रिमार्क्स सर इफ यू मे हैव एनी कंक्लूडिंग रिमार्क्स फॉर द सेशन um okay uh, so thank you very much it was a wonderful uh, i think dissemination of information and your experience uh, i would just uh, actually uh, uh, i have many questions but i think that i will delay it till we have a separate one to one uh, session uh, at a later stage which we have planned uh, i i had two observations one was regarding uh, you had said uh, uh, being from a different background uh, discipline is an issue actually uh, i have been in uh, almost 42 years with academics and uh, i have been commanding up to 6000 civilian people also uh, i have uh, learned one one thing and i'm sure this would be applicable to you this is out of experience you have to have carrot and stick so rewards makes a lot of difference so discipline actually comes with uh, in, in civil side i would call reward makes them disciplined so if you can uh, try this out maybe it helps so this was just on the on the on, on one of your uh, comments again is uh, this was regarding uh, the uh, digital transformation as you said uh, a business uh, is the first thing which we start and then it should be actually helping them out and not the other way around this is what i gathered from you is it right ji yeah, absolutely Uh, i i i would say uh, nowadays nowadays um, and this is our experience because we have we are running another advisory um, sort of a session with industry in the industrial uh, academia linkage and we have named it it's actually not named actually this is international now practice upskilling of uh, industry and uh, we feel that academics can actually help them to upskill uh, in especially in the covid as well as the post covid era when they had certain problems and they had to give up some some sort of their practices they have to adopt new ones i think this goes hands in glove at times it has to take uh, 
precedents because they have to tell them what is all available. Maybe business people do not even know. Similarly, uh, yes, initially business people should know what their strategy is and what is their plan. And within that, how much disruptive technologies and IT can help. Uh, actually, me and you and other are from IT and only Ahmed is singled out for being a business. Uh, we can always prevail, but it should be prevailing logic, which should be important. I think, I think if they go hands in glove and I call this a uh, chair. I, I feel that chair is only stable when minimum of three legs are there. Four would be absolutely making it stable. And two most important ones are the business itself and the technology. And the third one is the finance. Third one is the finance. So, uh, that at this, I find that businesses invest blindly in technology, thinking that technology will be the panacea for all their problems, right? Uh, they don't have a strategy. They think automation is going to solve the problem. So it is a it is a partnership. Like I said, बहुत कभी कभी बहुत late invest करते हैं उसको वो overhead सोचते हैं और कभी कभी वो उसको एक क्यों all समझते हैं तो this is the panacea. You get technology and all your problems are solved. So there are two extremes. So the ideal is the middle path where technology provides the foundation based on which the business is going to uh, you know automate the processes. But they should know which processes to automate as well, right? IT can guide, but IT cannot tell them how to run the show. They are the business experts. So, if I have a product development process, I have a clear idea that I have to do product development. So, IT guru can never do the product development process. So, a lot of process automation is a step of business process re engineering. I have to do this based on my experience. Because you did not think with technology in your mind in the first instance. If you thought that I would have to automate it then maybe you would have engineered it correctly and you wouldn't waste two years and then go back to the drawing board and re-engineer your process. So it's about you know, thinking it through, which I talked about initially, that people don't think through. That okay, I will gradually invest in technology, but in the meantime, is my process even making sense? I mean, kya char approvals zaruri hai? Aur char mein se do to ek hi banda approve kar hai. I'm just giving you a very basic example. So we've experienced this in my current organization as well. So it's a very, very common problem. Processes pehle re-engineer huye, uske baad pe automate huye, kaafi masle hal ho gaya. So at times, you know, the issue is with the process, not just the technology. And sometimes uh, it's the other way around as well. Um, so, you know, it's kind of like hand in glove, like you rightly said. Uh, that's that's correct. But Sadaf, uh, this will conclude this session. Sadaf, thank you very much for being here. Thank you, Jee. Sorry, Sadaf, one minute. Uh, Jee, Sadaf, uh, last one one thing. Uh, take it home, and I think uh, this would be a food for thought, uh, especially when you see it in the context of uh, artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence is now uh, making people, business people, to uh, get better and new ideas where they are absolutely changing their basic concepts of business. So what I want to say is that this is not only hand in gloves, but it, you cannot decide whether which, which thing takes play, uh, precedence. It's just now that they are interdisciplinary partners. And if we think on this, these nights, maybe uh, we can get better jobs. I mean, the, the technical people can better, get better jobs. Uh, but my point is, this would be business plus technology, and that's the answer. Even our upscaling is also based on this same concept. We'll discuss it on upscaling a little later, but since you said you had time at uh, 55, so Ahmed, over to you. Thank you very much once again. Okay, Jeev, with this, we're signing out. We have one session left. We'll be back with after a short break. Thank you very much.